The Theory of Personality This presentation takes a closer look at the humanistic personality theory of Carl Rogers. Rogers' theory of personality evolved out of his work as a clinical psychologist and developed as an offshoot of his theory of client-centered therapy. Rogers' approach to the study of people is phenomenological and ideographic. His view of human behavior is that it is exquisitely rational. Furthermore, in his opinion, the core of a man's nature is essentially positive and he or she is a trustworthy organism. These beliefs are reflected in his theory of personality. Rogers maintains that the human organism has an underlying actualizing tendency which aims to develop all capacities in ways that maintain or enhance the organism and move it towards autonomy. This tendency is directional, constructive and present in all living beings. The actualizing tendency can be suppressed but can never be destroyed without the destruction of the organism itself. The concept of the actualizing tendency is the only motive force in theory. It encompasses all motivations, tension, need or drive reductions and creative as well as pleasure seeking tendencies. Only the organism as a whole has this tendency. Parts of it, such as the self, do not. Each person therefore has a fundamental mandate to fulfill his or her potential. The human organism's phenomenal field includes all experiences available at a given moment, both conscious and unconscious. As self-development occurs, a portion of this field becomes differentiated and this becomes the person's self. The self is a central construct in this theory. It develops through interactions with others and evolves awareness of being and functioning. The self-concept is the organized set of characteristics that the individual perceives as peculiar to him or herself. It is based largely on the social evaluations he or she has experienced. A distinctly psychological form of the actualizing tendency is related to this self is the self-actualizing tendency. It involves the actualization of that portion of existence symbolized in the self. It can be seen as push to experience oneself in a way that is consistent with others' conscious view of what one actually is. Connected to the development of the self-concept and the self-actualization are secondary needs that are assumed to likely be learned in childhood. The need for positive regard from others and the need for positive self-regard, an internalized version of the previous. These lead to the favoring of behavior that is consistent with the person's self-concept. Healthy people are individuals who can assimilate experiences into their self-structure, which leads us to the term of concurrency. Our real self includes the influence of our body image intrinsically. It is initiated by the actualizing tendency, follows the orgasmic valuing, 
needs and receives positive regard and self-regard. It is described that you will become successful if everything continues and goes on well for you. Our self-image has a direct effect on how a person feels, thinks and acts in this world. The idea itself represents our strivings to achieve goals or ideas. We develop an ideal self because the society is divergent from our actualizing tendency. We are forced to live with conditions of worth that are out of step with organismic valuing and receive only conditional positive regard and self-regard. The shaded area between those two represents the congruency between the real self and the ideal self. Now, with unconditional positive regard, the self-concept carries no conditions of worth. There is concurrence between the true self and experience. The person is psychologically healthy. According to Rogers, those who are able to self-actualize are called fully functioning persons. The closer the person's self-image and self-ideal are to each other, the more congruent or consistent and the higher the person's self-worth is. Incongruent behaviors result from incongruence, which are inconsistent with conditions of worth, are either denied or destroyed completely to awareness experience incongruity indicates a basis inconsistency in the self. How could we dissolve an incongruity? After a client realizes that he or she is responsible and not the coach for all his or her actions, he or she has to inquire all problematic issues that cause his or her mismatches between the real self and the idea self. The most promising way of doing this is the way of self-exploration. Self-explore, supportive, accompanied by the transition coach through the non-directing coaching method. Self-exploration in this context looks at your own thoughts, feelings, behaviors and motives and asks why. It is looking for the roots of who we are and looking for the answers to all the questions we have about ourselves. Finally, indicated more as an advice than an actual law, Rogers describes a fully functioning, psychologically healthy person by using five indicators. First, openness to experience. This is the opposite of defensiveness. It is the accurate perception of one's experience in the world, including one's feelings. It also means being able to accept reality again, including one's feelings. Feelings are such an important part of openness because they convey the organismic valuing. If you cannot be open to your feelings, you cannot be open to actualization. The hard part, of course, is distinguishing real feelings from the anxieties brought on by conditions of worth. Second, existential living. This is living in the here and now. As a part of getting in touch with reality, Rogers insists that we are not live in the past or in the future. The one is gone, the other one isn't anything at all yet. The present is the only reality we have. 
mind you, that doesn't mean we should remember and learn from the past. Neither does it mean we shouldn't plan or even daydream about the future. Just recognize these things for what they are, memories and dreams, which we are experiencing here in the present. Third, there's the organismic trusting. We should allow ourselves to be guided by the organismic valuing process. We should trust ourselves, do what feels right, what comes natural. This has become a major striking point in Roger's theory. Keep in mind that Roger's meant trust your real self. And you can only know what your real self has to say if you are open to experience and living existentially. In other words, organismic trusting assumes that you are in contact with the actualizing tendency. Fourth, experimental freedom. Rogers felt that it was irrelevant whether or not people really had free will. We feel very much as we do, and this is the important thing. This is not to say, of course, that we are free to do anything at all. We are surrounded by a deterministic universe, so that, flap my arms as much as I like, I will not fly like Superman. It means that we feel free when choices are available to us. Roger says that the fully functioning person acknowledges that feeling of freedom and takes responsibility for his or her choices. Fifth, creativity. If you feel free and responsible, you will act accordingly and participate in the world. A fully functioning person in touch with the actualization will feel obliged by their nature to contribute to the actualization of others, even life itself. This can be through creativity in the arts or sciences, through social concern and parental love, or simply by doing one's best at the job.